Hey everybody, Aaron from The Impatient Gardener. Welcome to Wine and Weeds Part 3. So not starting with the cocktail today because we have a special guest star mixologist. This is Kate from Peonies and Palomas and she has a fabulous garden in Vermont and she makes amazing cocktails. So how could we not invite her to make a very special drink for us? So over to Kate. What I'm making today is a bourbon blackberry thyme fizz. I'm using bourbon, but you can use vodka or gin if you prefer. I'm going to show you how to make it. So what you'll need is your spirit, lemon juice, simple syrup, blackberries, some thyme, and then a little bit of club soda. Let's get started. I'm going to muddle about three or four blackberries in my cocktail shaker. If you don't have a cocktail shaker, that's fine. You can use a mason jar. I'm gonna put in some sprigs of the thyme and a little bit of simple syrup, which is sugar and water dissolved together. I'm gonna to use half an ounce. There we go. And I'm just gonna gently muddle those together. I have a muddler, but if you don't happen to have one of those, you can use a, the long end of a wooden spoon. That'll work just as well. So you just gently wanna press all the solids and release the juice from the blackberry. And you wanna do that with the sugar in there because it just helps the blackberries release their juice. So now I'm gonna add three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, nothing out of that plastic container. There we go. And two ounces of your spirit, whatever you choose. I'm gonna use bourbon today. Here we go. All right, no spillage. I've got ice on the other side of my shaker. I'm gonna put everything together, secure the top, and give it a good shake. That should be good. All right. So I like to add the club soda to the shaker, and I'll tell you why in a moment. So I'm just gonna add probably about two ounces of club soda. I've got a tall glass here with some large ice cubes, and I'm gonna double strain the drink into the glass. So the reason I put the club soda into the shaker and just kind of swish it around is because if I were to just add the mixture without the club soda to the glass and then pour the club soda on top, when you take that first sip, it's gonna be mostly club soda, and that's not ideal. So put it in your shaker and then strain it. I'm gonna double strain it because I happen to have a double, uh, strainer. This one, this one holds the ice back, and then the other one will take the seeds out. But if you don't have that, you can just pour everything into a glass. Just be a little bit of blackberry seeds in there, which is a-okay. I use my muddler to help everything just kind of push through that strainer. That's looking good. I'll add just a little bit more club soda just to the top. And then to garnish, I'm gonna take more thyme, place it in the glass, and then like three more blackberries and just put them on top. So thank you again to Erin and Laura for having me. Um, I can't wait to see this week's episode. Here's to weeds in your garden. Cheers. Well, cheers. I did not double strain mine, so there's little blackberry parts in there. And I put all my thyme in at the beginning and I didn't save any for the garnish. It doesn't matter, it's delicious. What I love about it is it's super refreshing. I made mine with a gin called, I'm back. I made mine with this gin called, get out of the way. This is Bar Hill. This is a gin from Vermont that I actually learned about from Kate. So since I'm not a bourbon drinker, I thought it was appropriate to give this a try. It has the tiniest little touch of honey in it, but it's not sweet. It's just a really interesting flavor. Anyway, it's delicious in this drink. This drink is amazing and um, extremely what I love about it. It's really refreshing and light. Um, it doesn't feel like anything heavy, perfect summer drink. Well, since we have this fabulous drink, I thought I'd go really easy this week with my weed choice and something I can pull with one hand while I hold this drink and I won't even have to bend over to do it. Amazing. No, in fact, in many ways, this is not really a weed. 
I don't want to get into the whole discussion about what makes something a weed, but I consider, I pull this in my garden, let's put it that way. Um, I don't get fastidious about pulling this weed, but I do pull it. So what I'm talking about here is jewel weed. So I'm standing right here by this Annabelle hydrangea because in the back of this area and like right here, here is some jewel weed right here. So I'm gonna pull it right now. I might be able to do it while I'm drinking. Mm-hmm, done. Roots and all, right? Okay, so this is actually kind of a cool plant. It's actually native to the northern and eastern part of the United States. It is, uh, its botanical name is Impatience capensis. So it's part of the Impatience family. Uh, it gets um, these cute little orange flowers on the Most of them get these orange flowers on them uh, that are actually the butterflies like them. I've seen insects on them. Uh, so already I haven't even gotten to all the sort of good traits of this plant. So I think it's safe to say that on my weed scale of one to five with five being move out of your house and one being maybe don't worry about it so much this falls at a one um, it's also browsed on by deer sometimes um, which is fine with me so it's not that it's not really a bad plant um, so it has these stems that i hope you can see the stem here sort of almost a see-through stem and uh, it's sort of uh, like almost watery it pulls out when you pull it you can just pull it one handed. It has, this is all the roots I've gotten the entire thing. And it's a reseeding annual. And uh, what's interesting about this is that there are actually medicinal benefits to this too. When you open up this stem, this, uh, the little, it's not even sap because it's like watery in there, is actually an astringent. It's actually helpful. It's antifungal. It can help you with itching um, type things. If you get into poison ivy or stingy nettles, um, you can actually rub some of this on, that, on there. So it's sort of actually helpful. The problem is, is that it grows in these big clusters. Uh, it grows in giant sort of groves and it likes moist, kind of richer soil which means it really loves a lot of the soil in my garden. Semi-shade usually, although this is the west side of the house and you saw it was right there in the middle of all these hydrangeas. So many of you are probably screaming right now saying, I have tried to grow jewel weed. What are you doing pulling it out? I think this is one of those lessons in weeds. Plants behave differently in other people's gardens. I know that Margaret Roach actually listed this in her New York Times column as one of the weeds that she I'm putting that in quotes, that she leaves. Um, I know people who have actually bought seeds trying to, trying to grow this. So, uh, you know, in my garden, I choose to pull it. There's no shortage of it. So I don't feel bad, <laughs> feel bad about that. I do pull it because it can take over areas rather rapidly. However, that leads me to another good point, which is that it can create colonies that are so dense that it can even outcompete garlic mustard weed. Few plants can do that. So, I mean, I guess I just keep coming up with the benefits for this weed that I'm pulled out of my garden. The one thing about this plant that is actually very cool from a plant observation standpoint is that when the seeds get ripe, they have these kind of elongated seed pods. When they get perfectly ripe, any touch whatsoever will make them explode. And there are scientific papers written about, they use this spring mechanism to shoot them. And you can, you can, you will feel them. I have walked through colonies of this just when those seeds are ready to go and you, they pelt you. It's crazy. It's actually really cool probably for kids to sort of see that. I think they'd be really interested in that. So anyway, that's my very, um, let's say easy weed this week. Like I said, I do pull it from my garden, but uh, it's not a bad invader really by any means. And you might have this growing in your garden or want this growing in your garden and more power to you. Cheers everyone, it's Laura with How's It Growing. Kate, thank you so much for sharing this wonderful cocktail with us. As you can see, I brought it to go. It is a hot, steamy, sticky, humid, yucky day here in Southern New Jersey, zone 7A, which is quite normal for us. This is our day-to-day -day routine here in the summer. So let me turn the camera around and show you guys what weed I'm battling in the garden today.
So here we have one of my main garden beds. I have a small garden here just to show you guys what a little mulch can do. So we know mulch is a great weed suppressant. It retains moisture. So it's a really good thing to do, but unfortunately it is one of my most hated tasks. I buy bagged mulch, it's uh, natural mulch, and it's like the super fine shred that I pick up at one of the big box stores. And I have had deliveries of mulch, and price-wise it ends up being about the same, but bags are far more manageable to me, so that's what I do. And I'll have the rogue weed or two come in, I can see one right there, but it's totally manageable. So once you hand pull early on in the season and get that mulch in, you're really making life a lot easier for yourself and it's a lot more manageable to just come out and pop out the random weed or two and also the more thickly you plant your borders the less chance you have for weeds to creep in your desirable plants are then smothering out and overshadowing and overpowering the weeds so this is the good bed now i'm going to swing you around here you'll see we are in construction mode here we took down our shed and we're putting in a greenhouse, my husband and I. Um, so we are working on that. I can see a bunny hopping around there in the background, but I had to pick and choose. I work full time, I've got my family. So I said, I can either drive myself nuts, uh, tending to a garden bed over here that is gonna be completely revamped, or I can just say to heck with it. Wine and weeds couldn't have come at a better time really because I've got weeds aplenty this year. I really do because of all the construction. So today's weed, I started pulling some of them out already, is common purslane. It's a succulent. You can see it's got those succulent type leaves and it's in the portulaca family. So I love portulaca. I actually think portulaca is quite pretty, but that is portulaca grandiflora that you're typically seeing in your garden centers. This is again, common purslane. So in the family, this was starting to flower and get the little yellow blooms on it. You can see little buds right here. And we don't want it to flower because flowering equals setting seed equals dropping seed equals spreading weeds. So we don't want that. I just want to come out and do it now before it becomes a arduous task of me sitting out here pull, pulling out purslane, purslane all day, which is very easy to pull and very easy to get the full tap root there. And you can see these plants are large. I've pulled these by hand. Look, you can see some of my wood sorrel in there too. But let me pull one of these out for you right now and show you how simple it is to really just pull these by hand. You just wanna grab in the middle as far down as you can and just very gently twist and slowly pull. And you can see I got that whole root there. It really, really is easy to get rid of. You don't need any special tools. It's quite simple to pull by hand, which is what I do. I do not use sprays or any pesticides of any kind. I do all hand pulling and organic weed removal here, but you can see, and I do have quite sandy soil. So if your soil is a bit more dense or compacted, you may need to use like a little hand trowel just to loosen it up. But you can see these are very, very easy to get rid of. So before these set seed and spread everywhere, I'm just gonna go along and pull these out. Hopefully this, got, this shows you guys a little bit of garden reality, the good, the bad, and the ugly. When things are in construction, they're not pretty. And uh, yeah, so if you keep on top of things early, if you mulch, if you thickly plant your borders, you will have much more success and you won't be out here uh, a slave to your weeds, pulling them out morning, noon, and night, and you can really keep on top of it. Okay, so that's it for me and Laura and Kate this week. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Kate, for being here. Links in the description below to where you can find Kate, to Laura's channel, our previous wines and weeds, if you've missed any of them. Uh, and we will be back on Laura's channel next week. And do us a favor, leave us a comment and let us know what weed is driving you nuts this week. We're loving the comments. We're getting a lot of ideas for drinks and weeds we can feature uh, in future episodes. So thanks for the great response. Have a great day in your garden. We'll see you soon. Bye.